What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a really fun match for you. If you guys enjoy this type of content, remember to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel and it only takes you a second. Also, remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Something like 40% of my viewers are subscribed, so consider, uh, you know, hitting that sub button. And now I'm done saying my YouTuber stuff. Anyway. Uh, today we've got a, a really interesting match where, uh, from the team preview, you're noticing that Damn, is this not looking good for me. Opponent is working with pretty much every top tier threat. They've got both Latios and Latias, Scizor, Heatran, Clefable, and Rotom Wash. So, very much all kind of the top overused Pokemon. I'm using a very random team of never used Pokemon. Just pull some stuff that I kind of wanted to see if I could get to work. So... Uh, it's always going to be an uphill fight, but, you know, I'm down for the challenge. Anyway, they're going to lead off with their shiny scissor, because, you know, everybody got to rock that uh, baby puke green scissor. As I toss out the uh, the Rotom fan. So I go with the old Air Balloon. His name's Air Balloon, because that item actually doesn't exist in this game, unfortunately. So I got to just give him the nickname anyway. Um, it's always funny to have that, you know, triple resistance to, <laughs> to ground if it was carrying an Air Balloon. Anyway, uh, turn one, I'm thinking, you know... I'm going to try to neutralize this threat as early as possible. I go right for the Will-O-Wisp, um, and I'm able to kind of cripple that Scizor, which is definitely going to help me out in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, this Rotom is actually choice specs, so I changed up the items on this thing. I decided I want to rock specs, uh, but now I'm locked into, you know, Will-O-Wisp, and that's not going to get me too far as they end up bringing in a Latios. Now, everybody knows how scary Latios is. This thing can... Definitely poke some holes in my team, and then the worst part is they also have a Latias in the back. So it's like I deal with this, uh, and then I have this dude's sister to take care of. So I decide to go into nudes. Um, I'm like, you know what? Might as well just send this guy some nudes. Uh, so I bring out the old, the old Shuckle, who actually takes that Draco meter pretty damn nicely there. Nudes out here really is the MVP, and I'm really, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that I need to get up my Stealth Rock here. So I'm just gonna go for that as they end up actually switching into their Heatran. So. Evil Angry Lava Frog versus uh, just a chill turtle. He's, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time and Heatran over there is kind of harsh in my vibes a little bit. Uh, I get up the Stealth Rock, which is nice. That's going to kind of punish some switches a little bit and make my team uh, that, that much closer to being able to knock things out, uh, depending on how many times they switch. So, um, I'm thinking I probably shouldn't go for Sticky Web here just because of the fact that looking at their team, not a lot gets affected by it, uh, unfortunately. So, I actually expect them to just set up their own Stealth Rock here. So I decide to stay in and go for a knockoff, just to kind of get a little bit of intel on what this Heatran's about, plus, um, you know, just kind of see, you know, what it's working with there. But uh, it actually gets me with a lot of Magma Storm, as I just say, hey, knock it off, man. Hit him with my noodles, and uh, <laughs> able to get rid of that thing's leftovers. But now the bad part is I'm actually stuck here uh, because of that Magma. So that's actually wildly unfortunate. Um, there's really nothing I can do at this point. I can't switch out. Um, I'm just gonna go right for another knockoff, hoping maybe they end up switching and I can get another knockoff, which would be great. Uh, but, they end up going for a taunt, so I just go for another knockoff, which, you know, basically heals this Heatran. He hardly feels that, as, uh, Noodles is kinda getting, kinda getting hacked over here. I've already eaten my berry, uh, and at this amount of HP, there's really not much that Shuckle would be able to do, even if I was able to switch out, so it's kind of in my best interest, uh, to get Shuckle taken care of. I'm able to... Uh, now get a free switch in to whatever I want, but losing Shuckle really sucks because now uh, that kind of limits switch ins I have to things. Shuckle on this team does really well uh, in being able to switch into things that others do not. So uh, now I decide to bring in the Kecleon, the absolute beast, the motherfucking threat. Kecleon is such a fun Pokemon to use, and the good part is I feel like not a lot of people know what this thing's gonna gonna be hiding under his sleeve. So. Uh, I'm gonna go for a power-up punch here. I figure, I know that there's a Clefable on their squad, but I don't know if they know what this Kecleon's gonna be working with, so maybe I could get a little bit, uh, a little bit of setup here and, and start to do some stuff to this squad. So, uh, I go for the power-up punch as they actually hit me with another Magma Storm. Uh, is able to hit two in a row, which is kind of annoying, but really not too big of a deal. As I actually take that rather nicely, plus uh, my next play here is Drain Punch to knock this thing out. So that actually uh, ends up you know, healing me quite a bit if I'm able to land that on the Heatran. So I am going to go for the Drain Punch here. I don't want to get super greedy with the power-up punches because uh, they do have fast Pokemon on their threats. But they actually end up switching into the Latios here. Now, Latios takes a little bit of Stealth Rock damage. I also punch him right in the face. And uh, I actually get a big chunk with that uh, with the Leftover Recovery and the Drain Punch. I'm actually... Kecleon's looking, you know, not, not too bad over here. And it's actually... 
uh, kind of important for this matchup. Kecleon, you know, kind of puts in some work for me here. So now I'm thinking, all right, they're definitely just going to try to drop a Draco on my ass. Uh, so I'm going to go right for the Sucker Punch here, which they're probably not going to expect. And you guessed it, I Sucker Punch him right in the chin, and that is a dead Latio. So I'm able to take care of pretty much the, the, the worst offensive threat they have on their squad. Uh, for me at least and that uh, that is amazing Kecleon out here eating his leftovers honestly just chilling eating his apple after taking care of a legendary and boy am I proud of my guy over here so now they decide to bring in the Clefable now fairy types are kind of like the opposite of what Kecleon likes because no matter what I do I turn myself into a type that is weak to fairy plus obviously with just pl with, with just one attack boost I can't I can't ch touch this chewed piece of gum ass Clefable so I definitely do not want to stay in here, obviously, but looking at the remainder of my Pokemon, I don't really have much that can switch in <laughs> to really anything. Uh, I decided to go into the Dodrio here, uh, just because I know I can take one attack, and my main objective is to pretty much weaken this Clefable to the point where uh, I can take it out later. Now, Clefable is one of the Pokemon that uh, my team really is not prepared for, so if I can whittle this thing down, get some chip, I can make myself... I make it a little easier on myself later. So they go for the Moonblast there. Uh, of course, that does over half to me, um, and that you know, is unfortunate. But what I can do uh, is just go right for a Brave Bird here. I'm Life Orb, um, and a nice little stab Brave Bird is going to do a solid chunk to this Clefable, make it definitely a little easier to take care of. I would have hoped for uh, a little more damage, but look at this fat ass all over here. There's no way you're doing mad any damage to this thing. So uh, I actually faint to the Life Orb, and luckily they just go for the Moonblast there. I know. Clefables generally to rock uh, some reliable recovery, uh, you know, whether it's like Wish or Soft Boiled or Moonlight or whatever, whatever the hell these things do. Anyway, now I'm able to get a free switch in and Krakatoa, the legend, comes in. I'm thinking, alright, an eruption kills at this range for sure, but I also know that they have a Heatran on their squad, so I'm expecting the switch into the Heatran and predicting that I go for the Focus Blast. He brings it in and I'm like, thank god, at this range, Focus Blast kills, but... Focus Blast has forsaken me once again. I honestly, what the fuck, Focus Blast? There was, if there was any time to not miss, that that was pretty much it. Listen, throw me a bone here, Game Freak, Jesus Christ! But I <laughs> just go for it again here, uh, as they actually end up switching in the Latias, obviously knowing that a Focus Blast was going to come uh, in rain on that Heat Trans Parade, and then I miss another Focus Blast. So I'm just really, I'm just really paying my dues over here. <laughs> Isn't. We don't call it focus miss for no reason. So that really sucks. I could have very much used uh, that momentum taking out the Heatran there. But, you know, that's kind of the fucking way she goes. And you gotta, you gotta play around that sometimes. So, um, I'm gonna decide to switch into the Rotom Fan here uh, against this Latias. Now, what's good is that they don't have uh, their own hazards up. They end up going for the Defog there. And they do get rid of my Stealth Rock. Plus, uh, my Shuckle is dead. So there's not gonna be any rocks on the field uh, and that really is kind of annoying. But now I've got a decision to make. Um, I am choice specs. So I'm going to lock myself into an attack here. I truly don't know if the Latias wants to stay in here. Um, I'm just going to end up deciding to go for the Shadow Ball. Because no matter what, I think it hits everything for uh, enough damage. Uh, neutral damage at least. As they actually end up going for the Tailwind. So the, uh, the support Tailwind Latias. Now they're going to be super speedy. And uh, I'm sitting over here kind of afraid. I go for the Shadow Ball. Uh, I get some pretty big damage with this Bedef drop, which obviously doesn't matter, but uh, they actually end up staying in and they go for the Reflect. Now, that's actually better for me. Had it been Light Screen, I would have been a little more worried, but uh, they go for the for Reflect probably because they're afraid of my, my Kecleon, which is kind of funny. So, I end up taking care of the Latias, and now I've got brother and sister both knocked out. I got Latios and Latias dead. Uh, and uh, things are things are looking decent. They have a reflect and a tailwind up, so I'm kind of you know playing from behind a bit here. Uh, but they decide to go into my brother, the uh, <laughs> the Rotom Wash, the much more popular Rotom form. But since I'm unconventional, I'm out here with the fan version, with uh, both Levitate and the Flying type. You cannot touch me with an earthquake. Um, so he ends up going for a Thunderbolt here. I know I can live pretty much any attack this thing goes for, so I decide to just stay in. Uh, considering I don't really have much that wants to switch in here, um, I just go for the Shadow Ball. And I'm able to get, you know, a, a solid chunk. Would hope for a little bit more, but this washing machine's about bulky as shit. Call that a heavy load cycle, boy. Uh, anyway, Rotom Fan doesn't look very useful for me in the rest of this match, so I decided to just stay in. Uh, he actually ends up going for the Hydro Pump. Risky maneuver, because he could have missed that. 
Uh, regardless, if he had gone for Thunderbolt, you know, I would have gotten some more damage. But uh, I was able to at least get a little bit, a little bit of chunk damage off on the Rotom. And now I get a free switch into whatever I would like. And the Tailwind actually goes away, which is perfect. So, I mean, honestly, not that big of a deal because they're faster than everything anyway. But I decided to go into Reginald, the legend, the man, the mushroom, the legend. If you guys remember uh, <laughs> Reginald from the Snakewood Nuzlocke, you're the goat. Anyway. I'm gonna go for a Spore here, as he actually ends up going for a Will-O-Wisp. He sees the Parasect and he's like, I've played Legends Arceus. I know that these things are dicks and they're gonna hurt, so he burns me. And uh, that really kind of sucks. So a Burnt Parasect is not gonna be able to do too much, but what I can do is uh, make this thing trip out so hard that it falls asleep. I hit him with the Spore, and that is amazing. If there's one thing that Parasect has going for it, it's that 100% accuracy Spore, and you just love to see it. So. Um, thinking about my win condition here, I decided to go into the Kecleon. Now, my plan for this is essentially to try to boost up Kecleon as much as possible. I know that if I'm able to get to around plus three, a Sucker Punch might knock out the Clefable uh, at the range that it's at. Now, it's a little bit below half. I think it's sitting at about 40%. Uh, so I'm really trying to kind of plan ahead here. Now, if I can get uh, some power-up punches to at least plus three, I know I can do around 40% to a Clefable and Kecleon. I've basically got a Kecleon in a dream over here, man. I don't know, this guy's team is scary. And I'm just essentially <laughs> trying my best. But they go into the Scizor, and I'm thinking, should I switch directly into uh, Reginald to sack it so that I can get a free switch into uh, the Typhlosion? And I'm thinking, yeah, that actually sounds like a pretty solid idea here. So, you know, a Burnt Parasect really is not going to do great for me. Homeboy's not going to be able to, like, X Scissor his way out of a wet paper bag. Uh, so I bring this thing in on a Brick Break. Surprisingly, it goes for the Brick Break, and it's like the first time ever Parasect has taken that little damage, you know, from anything. <laughs> Guys, four times a week to every type in existence, but um, kind of unfortunate. I honestly would have preferred that to just knock me out. Parasect obviously has nothing to do uh, to this Scizor here. I can <laughs> click X Scissor, but uh, like I said, you know, I'm burnt and just basically worthless as they end up going for... Uh, the U-turn there. So, conserve the Scizor for later, but honestly, as long as I have Typhlosion in the back, I'm looking good. I'm looking nice over here. So, they bring in the Heatran. Heatran might be literally like the scariest Pokemon if you're a Parasect. So, you know, X-Scissor does, of course, negative damage, but that's fine. I really just need Parasect to die so that I can get uh, a free switch in. And this is actually better for me uh, as a position than I was before, because then I can bring in Kecleon against uh, the Heatran and don't have to deal with Scizor until it comes in after I've got some attack boost. So, uh, it does take care of the Parasect. I was at least able to put the Rotom wa Wash to sleep, uh, which is kind of nice, but RIP Parasect. So, uh, now I get a free switch. I'm down to Typhlosion and Kecleon. They are working with uh, the Rotom, Heatran, Scizor, and Clefable. So, it's looking, you know, pretty scary, but it can be done. I have win conditions here, boys. Uh, I'm gonna go for the power-up punch here. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. Um, it does go for the flash cannon and does hit. That's probably their highest damage output there, but look at that. Kecleon just out here tanking that damage like nobody's business. And then I go for the power-up punch, uh, which does take care of the Heatran. Now, it was really um, kind of an interesting play there. I wanted to go for the Drain Punch to get health back, but I know that if Kecleon wants to make anything else happen, it's just going to need to have those boosts. But at least after Leftover Recovery, I'm sitting at about half, and this is nice. They end up going into the Rotom rather than the Clefable, uh, which actually helps me out greatly. So, Sleeping Rotom is uh, kind of the perfect target to just power up punch the shit out of. He basically just, uh, just a, a punching bag over here that I'm just out here just destroying. So I go for another power-up punch. Now I'm sitting at plus two attack, and it's actually kind of coming together here for old Kecleon. Um, Rotom is, you know, sitting above half health, but as long as it continues to stay asleep, I can actually, uh, I can actually make some stuff happen, even get some health back with a drain punch here. So I'm really considering, I know I need one more power-up punch to be able to be a threat uh, against the rest of their team. So it's kind of risky, because if he does wake up, a Hydro Pump does a lot of damage, but he actually ends up staying asleep. I go for another Power Up Punch here, and Kecleon is out here just doing it to him. It doesn't end up taking care of the Rotom, uh, which actually kind of sucks. Had that killed, that would have put me um, in a mighty fine position, but actually it doesn't really matter, because if I do want to ensure that this thing dies before it wakes up, I do have the priority with uh, both Sucker Punch and the Shadow Sneak. So, what I actually end up doing here is just going for another Power Up Punch, uh, reason being is that I know that I can probably live one attack from this thing anyway if it wakes up. 
And plus, I really just need all the help I can get with attack boosts. So they actually end up switching out the Rotom. So basically, just out here giving me free boosts. Uh, but then they figure out that Clefable is kind of a hard counter to this lizard. So I go for the power-up punch. Uh, able to do like, you know, 3 HP damage to the guy. Uh, but I do get another attack boost there. So uh, at this point, I'm really hoping and praying that this Clefable wants to go for the attacking move. Unfortunately, they have already seen... Uh, Kecleon's trick with the Sucker Punch. I was able to take care of the Latios earlier, so they have that intel. Uh, but I really just need to go for it. If I can if I can land it, we're in great position. I go for the Sucker Punch, and Clefable is the biggest McAsshole in the entire universe and goes for the Wish. Honestly, there's there's very few Pokemon I hate fighting less than a, <laughs> than a Clefable, especially you know when I'm using an NU team. But it gets the Wish up, and that is really kind of a heartbreaker, but... Uh, there is still a way to win this. If I can get some chip with Kecleon, Typhlosion can definitely make some stuff happen, considering that the Rotom Wash uh, is whittled down and still asleep. So, I go for the Moonblast here. Super effective damage. I am able to live, uh, which is kind of nice. I actually went for the Power Up Punch here. I probably should have gone for Drain Punch for just like a little bit more damage, but uh, really not going to make too much of a difference. Um, even if the Clefable ends this matchup at full health, Typhlosion actually... Uh, tanks any hits that it can throw at me, and I think two hit kills with the eruption. So that's now my new game plan. I'm thinking Typhlosion, you are my dude right now, and we can we can really do it against the Zoyu team. So Kecleon, I'm just gonna go for uh, a Shadow Sneak here to just try to I guess just get a little bit more damage before I go down. Um, but planning this out of my head, I think this can work. So I go for the Shadow Sneak here, turn into a Ghost type real quick. Uh, it really doesn't make too much of a difference because I don't get very much damage, but he tells he ends up knocking me out. Uh, with another Moonblast here. So Typhlosion is at full health and there's no Stealth Rock up. So I know that Eruption is 100% my play here. Um, and I'm pretty sure it two hit KOs this Clefable. If it decides to hit me with uh, an attack, it just has Moonblast and I can definitely take that and still be in range uh, to where Eruption still does enough damage to I believe knock out the rest of their team. So I go for the Eruption here and uh, that is going to do a huge amount of damage to Clefable. You love to see it knock it to red. Oh, it actually ends up going for the Thunderbolt, uh, where that still knocks me to the point where I believe Eruption is still a better option uh, against Flamethrower here. Uh, if you don't know, Eruption works based off of how much uh, total HP you have in terms of damage. So I go for the Eruption again, and that finally takes out the Clefable. Amazing to see this little bastard go down, and now they are down to two Pokemon. One being a Scizor, one is this asshole Rotom, who is in red health. Uh, of course, I am Choice Scarf, so I outspeed, and uh, not much your washing machine can do here, boy. Eruption takes care of it, and that is going to be a dead Rotom. Now, all they got left is going to be that Scizor, and I was really just conserving um, just conserving my Typhlosion for that Scizor. So it's all kind of come down pretty much how it was supposed to in the end. It was a little bit of an unconventional way, but in comes the Scizor. And as you're going to see here, they actually don't give me the satisfaction of killing the Scizor as they just run. But the NU boys did it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. NU Pokemon are superior and they should be treated as such. Let's go. Really fun match. Um, I, I enjoyed using this team. It's definitely, you know, pretty scary against, you know, when 90% of the people you battle use mons like that. But the NU squad did it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure to hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.